Speak, O Lord, as we come to you, to hear your holy word to us. Amen. What does Lent mean to you? Is it that period leading up to Easter where you try to give up chocolate and become a total ratbag in the process? I speak from experience. Is it a time of I really ought to? Ought to give something up? Ought to try fasting? Ought to read my Bible? Ought to pray more? And with the best of intentions, somehow it doesn't happen. Or if it does, if you begin, it doesn't last very long. Again, I speak from experience. In our reading from Matthew today, Jesus enters the wilderness after his encounter with God at his baptism, where he'd heard the words, This is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. With these words still ringing in his ears, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. While in that heightened state of hunger, he was tempted. Tempted to use his power in a practical way, satisfying his hunger. In a dramatic way, demonstrating who he was and with misplaced worship in order to avoid the toughness of his calling. Interestingly, the tempter knew his Bible, using words and concepts from it in his suggestions to compromise and misdirect. But Jesus knew those words and his Father God even better. Three times he quoted back at the devil from the book of Deuteronomy, which tells of the Israelites' wanderings in the desert for 40 years. For Jesus, those 40 days in the wilderness were a time of preparation, clarifying his calling and the direction and nature of his ministry. Likewise, for Christians, Lent represents those 40 days and is a time to reflect, to fast in some sort of way, traditionally food, maybe meat or missing meals, or even something else that is loved. It's a time to repent, to change direction, to reset and seek God. It all starts with penitence on Ash Wednesday and culminates with the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday. Ash, used on Ash Wednesday, symbolises both death and repentance. We hear Daniel in the Old Testament saying, Then I turned to the Lord God to seek an answer by prayer and supplication, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And he confesses, we have sinned and done wrong, acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We don't get to hear any conversation between Jesus and God in the wilderness, only between Jesus and the devil. But I can imagine there was a lot of seeking and listening. We may find ourselves a bit more in the Daniel situation, though without the sackcloth and ashes, but still bearing our souls to God. Lent can be a time of laying down things that get in the way of our relationship with God and of taking up his love, his grace and his mercy. A time to be proactive proactively removing hindrances and distractions and to listen and be still. You can be still and silent and yet not necessarily listen. Real listening can be quite a challenge 
And it's not always the lack of room in your timetable that prevents you from listening. Sometimes it's the lack of room in your head. Again, I speak from experience here. And it is part of what Lent is about for me this year. I'm asking myself and God these questions. What am I deaf to that I shouldn't be? And what am I listening to that I shouldn't be? So there are these two questions again. What am I deaf to that I shouldn't be? And what am I listening to that I shouldn't be? So I'm going to meet God this Lent to do a lot of listening. Listening to what God is saying about these times. Listening to what God is saying about direction and the future. Listening for his promptings and calling, for vision and for intimacy. Listening to what God is saying to me directly, through his word and through other people, hopefully with discernment and certainly with prayer. Will I be in sackcloth and ashes? No. Will I be doing some repenting? I think I'd better. Will I be doing some receiving? Definitely. Will I come out of Lent having heard from God? I hope so. So here are some questions for you. How might you meet with God this Lent? It may be in silence, in reading, in prayer, in conversations with others, or pursuing courses on something like Zoom. It may be in creativity, in nature, in the great outdoors, or you might be tucked away in the secret place, in stillness and listening. The second question is, what might you want to give up or take up this Lent? Perhaps trying something in the traditional fasting line or maybe less use of electronic devices or less TV. Though lockdown may intensify the challenge here. Perhaps it might be the time to take up something instead. To phone at least one person a day to encourage them. To write letters. To make changes to your lifestyle to have conversations with God over your tea or coffee, or to explore different ways to worship him. And our third question. Jesus entered the wilderness led by the spirit, it says in Matthew, but came out of the wilderness full of the spirit, according to Luke. What changes would you like to see in yourself during Lent? And how would you like to come out different to the way you went in? I'd like to finish with a caveat and a prayer. First, the caveat. Don't beat yourself up about what you are doing or not doing particularly in the current circumstances. A little can go a long way and you are God's beloved too. Finally, a prayer. Thank you God that your grace is sufficient and that your love for us is everlasting. Thank you that whatever we are doing and wherever we are, however we are feeling, you are with us. And thank you for the resurrection life that we have through Jesus. Amen.